People often cheat with leg drive, robbing them of results. Tell me you don't know what a push press is without saying you don't know what a push press is. What's up guys, Alec Onkiri here, and today I want to dissect a new Instagram reel, a recent Instagram reel that came to my attention a few days ago by the channel Fitness FAQs. It's a pretty popular guy on social media who's a high-level calisthenics athlete, a very high-level athlete, very impressive calisthenics dude, and for some reason he recently decided to throw a clip of one of my old push presses into his recent Instagram reel where he was discussing overhead pressing. Specifically, he was making a case for why the Z press is a superior hypertrophy exercise compared to the standing overhead press, and we'll get into more of those nitty gritty details later. But basically, in that video, he called the push press a means of cheating that robs you of results. Those are quotes. Standing overhead press has problems. The spine load and leg stress is extra fatiguing for bodybuilding. Standing usually turns into an incline bench press when tired. People often cheat with leg drive, robbing them of results. The Z press is superior for hypertrophy. The beauty lies in sitting as this posture locks our pelvis in place. We can't arch the lower back, which makes these savagely strict. Technique is reliable and repeatable. Balance isn't an issue, which means we can focus on pushing. Now, I found this assertion interesting for multiple reasons. For one, do you know what a push press is? Do you understand why somebody would do a push press as opposed to a strict press? If so, why are you posting a clip of somebody push pressing when what you were looking for was a clip of somebody performing a shitty strict overhead press? And if you don't understand the difference between a strict press and a push press, why the fuck are you even talking about overhead pressing at all? If you don't understand the massively important difference between the various means of getting a heavy barbell overhead and why somebody would choose to perform one of these over the other at various times, then you have absolutely no business discussing the movements at all. Point fucking blank. Anyway, before I get too sidetracked, Basically, dude made this video, right? He, he threw my, my lifting clips in it for literally no reason whatsoever, no legitimate reason that I can surmise, which honestly kind of pissed me off because he does have a very big following. And, and for some reason, unbeknownst to me, because, because I have had one single interaction with him ever, and it was a positive one. So for some reason, unbeknownst to me, he kind of decided to paint me as a douchebag in that video, a douchebag who really doesn't know what he is doing, right? He showed me as what would basically be an, an ego lifter who's using his legs to lift more weight than he's supposed to be lifting or whatever is basically the picture that was painted in that little 60 second reel. So thanks, bro. I appreciate that. Good vibes, all that shit. But so basically he put me in his video and I think that now gives me the right to put that video under a microscope, right? Because frankly, I think that it's bad freaking advice. And so today we're going to review the barbell training advice of a calisthenics athlete who apparently does not know what a push press is. Standing overhead press has problems. Not really, but I have a feeling you're about to make some up. The spine load and leg stress is extra fatiguing for bodybuilding. Hold on now. Did you just imply that the leg stress of performing an overhead press while standing is going to detract from one's ability to build muscle in their legs? What? A am I a 95 year old cancer patient? Do I have isolated osteoporosis of the lower limbs? H how the fuck is holding a couple hundred pounds in my arms at most with locked legs, no less, going to fatigue my legs to such an extent that it's gonna hinder my ability to build muscle there. Don't you think that if you're in such piss poor shape that overhead pressing is what is ruining your lower body training, that you probably have bigger issues to worry about anyway? And then to the spine load point, it's basically the same deal, right? The loads on a strict overhead press are always gonna be relatively low. 
and compressive forces, those up and down forces that you encounter when you're holding a heavy weight in your hand, those are not a huge deal for the spine, right? The discs in the spine are actually designed to handle them pretty well seamlessly in healthy people. Now, add a little bit of that extension, right? That backwards leaning of the back into the overhead press pattern. You add that extension with the compression. That is a, a natural part of the overhead press pattern. It, it comes part and parcel with overhead pressing. So what happens when you do that? When you add that extension into the compression from holding the weight, I'll tell you what happens. Your back fucking explodes from that additional sheer force. Ah! I am, of course, kidding. Basically, nothing happens. Your spine is literally designed to be flexible, right? To move, to bend, to flex, to extend and rotate. Otherwise, we'd all be walking around like mummies, rock solid, unable to fucking move. A, a small amount of extension doesn't generally cause any issues. It's not like you're trying to bend yourself in half like the old timers used to do in the old school Olympic press. It is just a little bit of extension under what is in reality a pretty modest load. And this assertion is coming from somebody, myself, who has a condition known as spondylolisthesis, where that L5 vertebrae is actually shifted forward of the S1 vertebrae. So I am already locked, essentially locked, in a pre-extended position before I ever actually extend my spine. I am in a population of people w for whom where excessive extension actually does create the potential to aggravate the spine. And even then, I'm still saying that the extension that's present during an overhead press does not bother me at all. Standing usually turns into an incline bench press when tired. Let me stop you again. Regarding this point, who cares? Now, here you kind of have to ask yourself the question, why do we lay back in the first place when performing an overhead press? And the answer is, it is an intuitive act. And that is because it helps get the upper chest involved in the press. The further that you can lay back, the more chest you can get involved in the movement. But in reality, the layback that is present during an overhead press, a strict one, shouldn't really be very excessive anyway. It's just a modest amount that, that should really be your go-to technique that you should really teach your nervous system to allow when you're pressing overhead. And, and, that, and you should allow it precisely because it does get more muscles involved in the exercise. It does not detract from the deltoid engagement, it merely augments it with help from the pectorals. So you're getting more muscle engagement, not less. This really shouldn't be something that anybody has an issue with. Further, and probably more importantly, this slight layback that's present during an overhead press is actually a requirement for proper overhead pressing technique. Shocking, I know, right? But let me explain. When pressing overhead, the goal is to keep the bar directly over top of the hip joints. That is the center of mass, right? So now we have two choices. We can either remain perfectly upright as we press the barbell overhead, as fitness FAQs do suggest, and we can keep the bar over our hip joints, and then we can smash ourselves squarely in the jaw with the barbell. Personally, I don't like that idea. So let's do what he does instead. Let's stay perfectly upright and let's not smash ourselves in the jaw with the barbell. But look what happens then. The bar drifts forward as soon as he initiates the press. He is escaping his chin, but he is drifting the bar forward of the hips and as such is using a mechanically disadvantageous, a suboptimal lifting technique. I do not recommend doing this because it's inefficient. It is suboptimal and it's going to limit your gains in the long run. Like I said, the layback is actually a requirement for optimal pressing technique. So instead, what you should do is focus on laying back not by excessively extending through the lumbar spine or the lower back, but instead by pushing the hips themselves forward. Now this is a subtle but important difference. You can do it right now. If you stand up right now, you can feel the difference. Try it for yourselves. Extend your lower back, right? Push, push that lower back backwards and you will feel the erector muscles engage. Now. Go back to neutral in the lower back and instead try squeezing your glutes, squeeze your butt and push your hip joints forward. Now, 
Keep those glutes flexed for the entire press, for the entire set, and lock your quads as well. Now you're gonna be strong and stable, but instead of extending excessively through the lower back, you will be moving more so through the hips. And then you complete the motion of the layback with a little bit of thoracic extension. Some upper back extension is what completes the layback. You extend the upper back just as if you were arching on a bench press. Now, Tilt the chin back slightly, and you are ready to press big weights overhead with optimal form and an optimal bar path. The bar can now move straight up directly over top of your hip joints, and then it can slide back behind the ears once it has cleared the head. The Z-Press is superior for hypertrophy. The beauty lies in sitting as this posture locks our pelvis in place. We can't arch the lower back, which makes these savagely strict. Technique is reliable and repeatable. Balance isn't an issue, which means we can focus on pushing. This is BS off the break, dude. Look, I, I love the Z-Press. It's fucking fun, man. And it's a great variation to really help provide some spice to your training if you are an overhead press enthusiast like me, who's done pretty much damn near every overhead press variation that I can conjure up at this point. But even then, I can arch my lower back when I'm doing the Z-Press, right? I can feel it happening. In fact, it often happens to a greater extent when I am Z-pressing or when I am performing a seated, unsupported overhead press as compared to when I am standing. And that is because the bar path on the Z-press is so precarious due to the inherent lack of stability present in the movement. Now, I still focus on extending the thoracic spine to give myself some leeway in terms of clearing the chin, but the bar can get away from you so easily on this lip that sometimes you just find yourself maneuvering in interesting ways in order to keep yourself balanced, right, to prevent yourself from toppling forward or backwards while also trying to keep the bar reeled in into a position where you can actually stay in control of it and still have leverage to press it overhead, which makes the points that he brings up here interesting or really interesting is another way of saying just plain wrong. The technique of the Z-Press is probably actually less repeatable and more chaotic than a standing OHP because of the instability that is present when you're pressing this way. Precarious is literally the best way that I can think of to describe this exercise. Now with that, how the heck are you gonna say that the Z press is superior for upper body hypertrophy compared to the standing press, right? There's less chest involvement in a Z press because it does force you to keep the torso in a slightly less laid back position, right? You can still get some laid back, like I alluded to a minute ago, but not as much as when you're standing. So a Z press actually uses less total muscle than a standing overhead press as well. The Z press is highly unstable, like I was just talking about. It is highly technical and it requires an incredibly precise bar path as well. All of these things mean that the upper body force production during the Z press is likely not maximal and and that the exercise does not do very well under highly fatigued conditions. Therefore, contrarily, if maximal upper body hypertrophy through a vertical pressing pattern is your goal, then you want to emphasize movements that offer the most stability possible as your primary training movements of emphasis. So basically the exact opposite of what he's saying here, even for strictly bodybuilding purposes, right? A Z press is less stable than a standing overhead press, which is less stable than a torso supported overhead press. And in order to truly push things to the limit and create the greatest hypertrophy stimulus possible, you should actually emphasize the most stable overhead pressing variations, not unstable ones. This will allow you to maximize force production and maximize the amount of fatigue that can be created on the pressing muscles. Contrast a supported, a torso supported overhead press with a Z press where the Z press, uh, on the Z press, the core and the smaller stabilizing muscles will inevitably become the limiting factor much sooner than the big prime movers, the shoulders, the pecs, the triceps, and look, I love Z presses, man. I love Z presses and I love pretty much any other OHP variation you can name. But basically the exact opposite of what he's saying here, contrary to what he is telling you here, 
Balance is such an issue on Z presses that personally I never perform them or program them for my clients unless they can be done inside of a squat rack with the safety pins in place in order to ensure that nothing dangerous will occur in the event that you lose control of the weight and topple over, which is a very real risk during the Z press. How on earth is that a stable exercise? I have a problem with people dogmatically decreeing that you should perform a very specific exercise to achieve it, what is in reality a broad swath goal. Okay, now I actually have a video planned out for the near future where I'm basically gonna say and assert that the exercises that you do, that you choose to do in your training, are actually pretty much irrelevant. The specific variations, right? As long as you cover your bases properly, the specific variations that you choose to do are pretty much meaningless in the grand scheme of your long-term results. So, you should, based on that theory, Pick and choose variations that you enjoy doing and that you find fun and badass and challenging and stimulating and all that shit, right? But if you find a particular variation to be fucking boring or to be a chore or you just don't like doing it or it doesn't feel good for you, then you don't have to do it, right? There are no mandatory variations in this game and the Z-Press is not superior for hypertrophy. It's just another tool in the toolbox, man. And if hypertrophy is your primary goal, then in reality, the Z-Press is probably actually inferior to several other variations of OHP that you could do. It may be superior for other goals, but I would argue that hypertrophy is not one of them. Thanks to the built-in difficulty, we get more results with less weight. It's no longer about lifting as heavy as possible for the sake of it. Z-Press highlights how lower comparative loads can still be effective. Z-Press equals higher stimulus to the muscles, less fatigue to the nervous system. This point is moot. No one is burning themselves out from overhead pressing to begin with. Unless you don't eat, you don't sleep, and you blow your nervous system a new asshole every day by snorting pounds of coke every night, then th this isn't a concern that anybody in the real world has ever dealt with. Plus, it's like I said before, man, that stimulus from the Z-Press isn't necessarily all that high anyway. The reps are hard on that exercise because of the precarious nature of the movement, not necessarily because of the muscles are having to work super hard and are getting super fatigued, the big prime movers, right? It is like almost kind of like squatting on a BOSU ball in some respects. And for the coup de gras? People often cheat with leg drive, robbing them of results. Just no. All right, let's go to school. This is OHP 101, people. Ready? There are three basic ways to get a barbell overhead. The strict press, the push press, and the jerk. A strict press is a press done with pure upper body strength. The knees stay locked, and the shoulders, chest, and triceps power the barbell overhead. A push press is a combination of lower body power and upper body strength to get the weight overhead. A powerful leg drive initiates the heave of the bar off the shoulders, and then the weight is transferred onto the upper body musculature about two thirds of the way up. And from there, the triceps and shoulders finish the press overhead. A jerk is all lower body. It initiates mostly the same as a push press with a powerful leg drive to heave the bar off the shoulders. But then, instead of finishing the press with the upper body, you actually dip the hips back down again underneath of the weight. This allows the weight to be received overhead at arm's length and it allows the legs to bring you back to center. So with that quick explanation out of the way, it should be pretty easy to see that a push press is not a cheated overhead press. It's not a strict press for ego lifters. It is a different exercise altogether with different intended goals and benefits. And I personally do not appreciate people using my lifting content in such an ignorant fashion. The push press is an aggressive power movement for the legs that teaches you how to tie the upper and lower body together in an explosive concerted effort. It builds core and upper back strength. It builds lockout strength in the pressing muscles and it builds overhead support strength. It is a total body badass movement that is widely used by strongman competitors, Olympic weightlifters and athletes and a lift that was rightfully referred to as the athlete's lift by the late great Glenn Penn. Leg. It is not an efficient hypertrophy exercise for the pressing muscles, but no one ever claimed that anyway. It's certainly not at all cheating, and it doesn't rob you of results 
if you use it properly the way it is supposed to be used. I could literally make this exact same argument about anything, right? If I'm bench pressing to get bigger legs, then I'm robbing myself of results, yeah, by being a fucking moron. So it's just a different movement with different associated benefits. And people who don't understand what those benefits are should not be recklessly publishing training clips of people who do. A push press is not a cheated overhead press. It is a different exercise altogether that's intended to accomplish different training objectives altogether. Please do not allow this reel to dissuade you from learning and including amazing exercises such as the push press in your training. Instead, learn what the actual benefits of those movements are and decide if those benefits are congruent with your particular goals or not. Deuces.